What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this I want to talk about the overall market and break down something very important about the charts. I'm also going to talk about what Jerome Powell did that caused the market to go crazy and what this means for next week. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. So anyways, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about what Jerome Powell did and how on earth the charts are looking. Something very interesting happened, and that is Jerome Powell was giving his speech today, and he caused the market to pump like crazy. Now, in my previous videos, I was talking about how when looking at the market, we had some very interesting trends developing. I also mentioned to you guys that, you know, with SPY, we had a lot of potential sell signals developing, which could lead to some downside in the future. But things have now changed because of Jerome Powell. And I just wanted to say, guys, that there's nothing I could really do about that when unexpected things happen. And sometimes you just have to go with the flow and be open to adjusting. So, for example, right, if the stock market looks bullish and it's pumping and pumping and pumping, then all of a sudden tomorrow, tomorrow, there's a new pandemic or something really big happens that's completely unexpected, your signals could suddenly be incorrect and the whole market could just flip when you least expect it. Sometimes things like that happen. They don't happen all the time. It's very rare. And I think that today that just happened with Jerome Powell and his speech. When we were looking at SPA, I just wanted to mention this. The four hour was very bearish yesterday. We came down to 453. We weren't looking that strong. And all of a sudden today we got this monstrous rally thanks to Jerome Powell. If you look at the daily chart, let me just show you what I'm talking about. The daily was about to get a bearish crossover on the PPO. So if you look at the this MACD, for example, right? When we get these bearish crossovers, this tends to be bearish for it. You see it happened right here. It happened right here when we got very tight and started breaking down. And then as of recent, we came very, very close, very, very close off our bearish divergences to get that break. And it looks like they did this intentionally just to trap as many investors as possible as a lot of people were expecting a trap. And lots of indicators were suggesting that. Instead, when Jerome Powell spoke, this gave the market more euphoria and the market ended up doing the opposite as another trap formed. I personally ended up shorting SPY at 458. I thought that there was going to be potential downside coming. Not financial advice, but that's what I did. And then I ended up closing my positions because we got this very crazy move to the upside. And we ended up breaking to one of the highest levels we've seen in so long for SPY. We broke past the July highs and there's no sign of the market slowing down yet. So I know, I know you're frustrated. I know you're angry. The market tries to fool people. The market makers knew what these signals were basically looking like and they tried to trap as many people as possible all we could do though is just look at the charts and just continue to be unbiased and just know that the market is once again full of manipulation and at the same time you know they make money when we lose money that's all part of their game so even i took a loss guys i took the loss i lost thousands and thousands and thousands on that play but that's okay because when you're day trading losses are a part of the game you're going to lose money playing this game you're going to lose money on the stock market if you're trying to trade it's a part of it but the question is how do we make our gains more than our losses even if we're like wrong more than we're right you could still be very profitable so i took a loss on there but i'm going to be making a big comeback guys i'm not going to let that stop me and i know the same thing is going to happen to you guys you're not going to let this stop you so don't give up but i just want to make it clear things like this happen jerome pal caused something unexpected many of our indicators were at these extremes Right? But the market's not at extreme greed just yet. We see extreme greed on some other indicators. Despite that, that does not mean that the market has to now turn immediately. These were just some indicators that suggested that. Jerome Powell, however, had a different idea and he caused the market to pump even more. And he added even more fuel to the fire. So what did Powell say? What's going on? What on earth caused the market to rally? Well, in the beginning... Powell was saying that talking about cutting rates was premature. The Fed could not determine anything like that yet. And he did mention that more rate hikes were a possibility. However, however, he didn't really say he was keen on that. He just said that if the data suggests that, if there's any like hot economic data, that, that is going to lead the Fed to do so. But as of right now, there's no sign of it. And the Fed has no plan on raising rates from here on out. So he did make a brief comment about that. But he spent more time, okay, more time saying 
that the Fed is most likely done with their rate hikes. He was implying that. He was saying that there's been progress. And he also mentioned the possibility of a soft landing being probable. He said, you guys can see it right here, that uh, the Fed is likely, you know, done with the rate hikes. He implied that. He said it's going to depend on the data, but most likely, or it's very unlikely looking at the current pieces of data. Uh, this could change based off new data, but as of right now, there's no plan for them to raise rates more. He also mentioned that they, that they could start cutting in 2024 as soon as March possibly, but we don't know for sure. And then on top of that, he started talking about how rate hikes are on the table, but they're unlikely, and the Fed is most likely going to be pausing for the rest of the year. We only have like a month left, by the way. Um, with him saying that, the, the market was actually kind of like optimistic. Then he started talking about the soft landing. He mentioned that the soft landing is still on the table. There hasn't been too much pain for the labor markets. And he mentioned that it may remain this way. They could bring inflation down without causing too much pain in the labor markets. And the market was very happy to hear that. So something happened, and that is the target rate probabilities chart has changed. Now the market expects a pause for December. There's almost a 100% chance that's going to happen. They may know this. And because Jerome Powell just wasn't too stern on any more rate hikes, the market loved it. The market went crazy and the market is pumping because it thinks that the Fed is done. The market is just so excited and they're trying to give us a good close for the year. So is this the start of a Santa rally? It's possible, right? We've had the Santa rally for November. Could it continue? It sure can, guys. Unfortunately, it still can for the bears. It still can. We're going to be watching some confirmation uh, indicators first before we turn more bullish or bearish. I'm going to talk about those in just a few minutes. But just know that because of the fact that Jerome Powell added these new pieces of news, because Powell has hyped up the markets, and the market thinks the Fed is going to pause in December with much more certainty than before, right? This was actually a lot lower in the 80s. Before now, we're at 97%. There is potential for more upside, unfortunately, and this could invalidate some sell signals. I know you're probably really angry. It's very frustrating, but the market is just designed to trick people and hurt them. Even your technical indicators could be wrong sometimes. And that's why sometimes, or the majority of the time, you just have to be an open-minded trader and you have to be you know, managing risks very well with stops and et cetera, non-financial advice. Um, so could the fear and greed, greed index come back down to neutral or is it going to be continuing to go up? If the market keeps pumping, this is just going to reach the extremes again. And we're not there yet, which means that there could be some more room. Other indicators are already at these extremes. But when you look at the put and call positioning, we're actually breaking below 80, which tends to be like, a, you know, a bearish signal. But there have been times where it dropped all the way down to like the 60s, the 0.6s. So if that continues, if the ratio continues to drop, hey, there could be a little bit more upside. Unfortunately, I know the market had almost no downside. It just pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped. But the market is crazy. It's insane. It's completely illogical. And sometimes you just have to go with the flow and just look what, at what's in front of you. Uh, for Tuesday, we have NEO, AutoZone, just a couple of more earnings. And we'll just be going over these as time goes on. So what do I see for the chart? Here's the answer, guys. Unfortunately, all right. And like I was saying earlier, we had signals. Sorry, not here. Right here. We had these signals, right? That suggested that SPY was getting weaker. QQQ was getting weaker. We were so close to the bearish crossovers on the PPO. But instead, Jerome Powell came. The market makers knew this. They knew what you were thinking. They knew we were thinking that the market could see downside based off these indicators. So they, they decided to trick shorts, squeeze shorts even more, and push the market even higher. You know what the most shorted stock is right now? The answer is Tesla. Tesla is the most shorted stock in the market right now. And do you, now it makes me wonder, is Tesla going to crash now? Right. I was talking about how we need to see Tesla break particular supports to turn bearish. Tesla held support. It's holding up nicely. Tesla could still pump with the markets now. They could just completely be trying to trick you. And that's why I want to break down something very important. So now that Jerome Powell caused this unexpected crazy pump again, despite how much the market pumped without getting much downside, right, which is pretty insane, we, we have to look at the weekly time frame. On the weekly, we have officially broken out like this. And we have a nice cup and handle like formation. And our next target, if we manage to break 460, I'm going to turn bullish. We could be pushing for 467. If we break and hold 460, I think 467 is coming on SPY. Unfortunately, that's what's going on right now. And we just have to adjust to the charts. Uh, we have a bullish cross in the PPO. So it is technically looking bullish, but we need to see 460 break. 
If we're bearish, you want to see it reject close to 460 and come back down towards 458. If we lose 458, we're going to continue to drop. Today's SPY was very strong. So if it does pull back just a tiny bit, it might just be a tiny little pullback before it just pushes back up higher. And it looks like instead of getting a big pullback, they're just giving us tiny little pullbacks and just like buying it all up. So could the market pump more? Yes, we need to see SPY break 460. Charts are looking more bullish. We got a bullish PPO crossover on the weekly MACD. So I just wanted to call that out. I just want everyone to be prepared just to be safe. When it comes to other tickers out there, I just want to mention that looking at SPY, at least on a trading view, the daily chart's also looking bullish as we're uptrending again. And we got a very, very nice breakout. Uh, unfortunately, we ended up breaking the highs from July, which is another bullish signal. And like I said before, I mean, we had these signals suggesting this thing was getting ready to turn. Now the market just turned parabolic. They wanted to trick us and, you know, Jerome Powell got in the way. So we're going to be watching this resistance at 460. If we break it, we're going to push even more. If we fail to do so, then it is what it is. But that's what the chart is suggesting, unfortunately. Daily looks strong. The weekly looks strong. This is still looking bullish. When you look at Tesla, Tesla is very interesting because I was calling this out in the morning. I told you all that, look, we had this support trend line on Tesla. We could also redraw these lines. I'm, I'm going to actually clear up the chart just for a second. So when you zoom out on the daily charts, we had this support down here. This was acting as our support. We held this very, very nicely. And because we're holding support now, Tesla is technically uptrending. And because Tesla is the most shorted stock in the market, there's a chance this thing might squeeze. Okay, why could we squeeze? Well, the first thing is Jerome Powell gave more fuel to the fire. He helped pump the markets even more. If the market does pump more, this can help Tesla. Secondly, we held support on Tesla thus far. If we lose support, if we had broken this low right here, we broke 232 and we started sinking. We had this gap to fill on the daily. If we had broken 230, we'd likely fill the gap. Tesla held support. Jerome Powell got in the way of the shorts. It's pretty funny, huh? And with all these people shorting Tesla, it might just do the opposite now. I know you may not be very, very frustrated. You may be very angry. I warned you all in the morning that, look, we need Tesla to lose 230 to turn more bearish. If it holds that, there's a chance that we could see buyers defend it. So on the four hour time frame, if you look at Tesla, there's an imbalance all the way up here. We have two imbalances actually. We have one up here around this like two, we have one at 240, right about here, the 245 area. Then there's another one way up here, an imbalance up at, at about 253. Then we have another one at 260, just under like 262, I would say close to 260, which is where our previous breakout was. Could Tesla start pushing up into the 260s? It's possible Jerome Powell just triggered something that's going to push Tesla up, and then good news is going to come that's going to launch it higher. There's a possibility. But for now, Tesla's kind of like in this channel. So we're going to be watching this very, very carefully. And unfortunately, guys, I mean, you know, I would have loved to see something different play out, but Tesla's still holding up quite nicely. So could Tesla uptrend a little bit? Yes, it can. We could see some parabolic activity. Um, but we need to see this thing hold support, and we want to see this thing break 242. If we break 242, Tesla could turn more bullish. As of right now, it hasn't done so. So we'll see. But there is a good chance it's going to try to bounce down thanks to Jerome Powell and then other pieces of news coming out later. So things could shift on a dime in the market. It's a very crazy market. What about NVIDIA? Just wanted to mention that when it comes to NVIDIA, NVIDIA fell and fell and fell. But on the four hour time frame, we held our 200 EMA. And with Powell coming out, trying to pump the markets, if we hold this support, if we don't break this, NVIDIA could bounce and try to fill this imbalance and make its way back up to 480. Now, I know you don't want to hear that. I know you're probably angry to hear that. Totally understandable. The market is designed to make you lose money and fill the pockets of the market makers. Okay? Even though the bearish divergence didn't play out, they don't always play out. Uh, in this case, there is a bullish divergence now forming on NVIDIA, and we're holding our 200 EMA. If we lose this and we close below this, I'm bearish, we're going to be sinking towards 455. 
If we hold above this 463 area, the 200 EMA on the four hour time frame, it might bounce and make its way up to 474. If that breaks, we have an imbalance to fill up to 480. Okay, so we're going to be watching that very carefully. Apple, it was about to turn bearish, about to turn really, really bearish. And if anything, it still is not officially breaking out. But here's the thing about Apple. When you look at the charts, especially on the daily, let me just show you what I was looking at yesterday, just so that you're not like too angry. But just check this out, okay? Imagine we didn't know Jer Jerome Powell was giving a speech. Imagine we just kind of like didn't see it coming. And we just looked at the chart like this, okay? If we saw charts that look like this, would you assume that this chart's going to like, you know, start to uptrend? Or do you think that this chart's going to turn bearish, right? If you look at the chart, we had a bearish divergence, got a big rejection, we have a head and shoulders like structure. Then we also had this PPO crossover, right? This chart was looking bearish from a technical standpoint. And then Jerome Powell came and he pumped it right back up. And we got a bullish looking daily candlestick and it just reversed, trying to invalidate a lot of signals. So you guys can see the trickery in this market. Okay. It's a difficult market. Things like this happen. All right. Sometimes this happens. So you just have to move on. You have to brush it off. Apple looks decent. It's actually got a bullish cross on the PPO on the weekly. It could try to push up a little higher now. We have this 195 level to be watching for. Unfortunately, Jerome Powell got in the way. He could pump the market higher. On the QQQ, there's a doji forming on the weekly time frame. This is not looking as strong, but the weekly is showing some life. And when we get those weekly bullish crossovers on the PPO, we tend to see this push a little bit more. So are we about to get a Santa rally? Are we about to see this thing break out? If we break 394, this thing is going to be pushing for 400. We have a nice cup and handle on the weekly time frame. We'll see if we get a little pullback first and push. But if anything, the market is crazy. These people are, the, the market makers know what you're thinking. They have your information and they're going to try to do whatever they can to win. And in order for them to win, they have to get as many people as possible to lose. So it's trickery. Charts are looking bullish again. If the QQQ breaks the high it made, it's going to push up for 400. Okay. So the market could completely flip-flop things to Jerome Powell, despite all the bearish signals we had. Sometimes it happens and don't feel too angry, guys. We brush it off. We move on. If you take losses, it is what it is. Learn from them. Try to manage risks. Make sure your losses are not that bad and then come back stronger. Okay. Uh, if you feel like you risked too much, then manage risks and maybe like trade with less money. And then, you know, take your time because losses are a part of trading, but do what you have to do. All right. So the weekly on SPY is looking bullish now, but, but I need to see SPY break 460. If we break it, it's going to launch up to 467 over the next few weeks. And there could be more upside coming. I know, I know, I know, I know how you're feeling. I know you're probably frustrated. We had the signals. It should have turned. Yes. But Jerome Powell, the market makers, the manipulation got in the way and the market just continues higher with almost no pullbacks, right? We're super, super bullish on the weekly, not a single red week. We just pushed, 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 pushed. There's no sign of it stopping. So we're not going to make assumptions. We're going to be playing it safe. We're going to manage risks. And that's the best thing I could tell you. I'm so sorry, guys, that, you know, I was looking at the signals and they suggested something completely different. I'm sorry. I really am. I don't want anyone to lose. I don't want to see you guys experience pain. I don't wish anything bad for anyone. I don't, I don't have like malice intentions or anything. I just read the chart that's in front of me. And if there's a new piece of news, something new happens. Sometimes you just have to flip. Sometimes it happens, right? If I was bullish the whole time, then there's a new pandemic. The market could just turn bearish on an instant. Sometimes news happens. And in this case, we had bearish signals, but then Jerome Powell came and he pumped the market again. And he's giving the market more potential to pump even higher. All right. So watch your levels. Let's see if we get some kind of break to the upside now. Charts are starting to flip again. Jerome Powell got in the way of the shorts. And the market makers knew there were so many shorts out there. So they came in the way. I know exactly what you're thinking. I know how you feel. I completely empathize with you. Uh, but just know that when things like this happen, we have to brush it off. We have to come back stronger. And we're not going to let this stop us. All right, guys, enjoy the weekend. Let's come back much stronger. Don't let this get the best of you. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks again for listening. Have a great day. Market to the moon because the long term is still very bright. Despite all this madness, 
despite all the losses you may have experienced, the long term is bright, guys. Do not be negative. You have to be optimistic. You have to be positive. Thank you again and peace out.